Joining me now, the Wall Street Journal's Farnaz Fasihi. She's been tracking evidence of Iranian authorities trying to intimidate Iranians even abroad. And John Limbert, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Iran at the U.S. State Department. And the Iranian artist Shirin Neshat, who won the Silver Lion Award at the Venice Film Festival for her film Women Without Men, and who's become a voice of protest outside Iran. Welcome to you all. Welcome, Shirin. Welcome, John, from the State Department and Farnaz in Beirut. I want to ask you first, Farnaz, you and the Wall Street Journal conducted an investigation and you found a chilling evidence of a sort of a global intimidation and uh, monitoring by the Iranian authorities on protesters abroad. Tell us the, the heart of what you discovered. Um, hi, Christian. What we discovered through several months of investigation was that uh, there were methods in place inside Iran to monitor what the Iranians abroad were doing in terms of um, anti-government protests or uh, support for the opposition. We found uh, that ordinary people, not just uh, prominent activists, were getting harassed. They were getting uh, intimidating and threatening emails. Some of them were stopped when traveling to Iran and asked to log on to their Facebook accounts. Um, many reported that their passports, their Iranian passports, were confiscated. They were called in for questioning, and uh, a couple of people even said that their families back in Iran had received uh, threatening um, uh, phone calls. And in one case uh, that uh, I reported for the paper, uh, a young man who lives in the U.S. Um, and was very active on Facebook had his father arrested. The Iranian authorities, while they haven't specifically uh, comment on this, uh, officials here have said that the allegation that the Islamic Republic is creating limitations and problems for Iranians visiting from abroad is false. Uh, how have you been able to document the scope of this monitoring? You say something like 900 people, for instance, have been monitored in Germany alone. Uh, the German government actually put out a report um, this fall that they had evidence that uh, Iranian um, intelligence uh, agents were uh, filming the anti-government protests uh, and they had asked the German government to ban them. Um, despite the fact that the Iranian government has, uh, has told us uh, that, they, uh, that Iranians outside face no problems, uh, the government of Iran, the deputy chief of the commander forces, um, uh, Mr. Javad Ifeq, said that, he, um, that Iran has created a internet lieutenants and they were monitoring uh, opposition faces inside and outside of Iran including protesters and that they would be dealt with and Iran has several times said that it considers um, Facebook activity Twitter activity as part of this soft revolution that the West has waged against it let me move then on to John Limbert at the State Department deputy assistant now for Iran there how does this complicate what the administration is trying to do uh, Christian, thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think I don't think it does. Uh, especially, I can't do any better than quote the words of the president about uh, authorities who declare seem to declare war on their own people, um, or who are afraid of their own people. And let me first of all uh, salute the brave people of Iran and who are d going out on the street and demonstrating and braving this repression. And the fact that it has spread outside and that has gone out, is, uh, to me, is uh, an indication of just how, mu how much the regime is afraid of its own people. Well, since you bring it up, let's, let's play now what President Obama did say in his Nobel lecture, first referring to the people of Burma and also to the people of Iran. It is telling that the leaders of these governments fear the aspirations of their own people more than the power of any other nation. And it is the responsibility of all free people and free nations to make clear that these movements, these movements of hope and history, they have us on their side. So the president clearly there said they have us on uh, their side. What does that mean, John Limbert, if the United States is declaring that it's on the side of the people there? Um, it's, very, it's very clear, Christian. Uh, we will not sit silently. We will not ignore what happens on the streets of Tehran. And we believe, as we have always believed, that the Iranian people uh, deserve decent treatment from their government. And 
you say you won't sit silently, but at the same time, obviously, there are diplomatic negotiations that have to go on, most particularly over the nuclear uh, clock. There's a possibility of sanctions going on. How do you walk that line of engagement and being on the side of the legitimate aspirations of the people? Oh, no, of course. That's a, that's a good question. I think, uh, Christiana, our diplomacy is good enough uh, that we can do both, that we can make clear statements of support for the aspirations of the Iranian people uh, for decent treatment from their government. At the same time, we can certainly talk with the government and the authorities there about things like the nuclear issue or Iraq or Afghanistan or, or other issues. And we have clearly offered to do so, and we are determined to do so in an atmosphere of mutual respect. Let me turn to Shirin Neshat, not only an acclaimed artist, but also now a public voice for those protesters who are inside Iran. Do you believe that the world is paying sufficient attention and their human rights and legitimate aspirations are being embraced by the West? Uh, Christian, let me tell you how it looks on our side. I feel that the students in Iran, the people of Iran, and the people of Iran outside of Iran are setting a great example of people who are truly fighting for democracy. Uh, and this creates a sense of hope for the rest of the region, the entire world. But we don't feel that we have the sufficient support or the protection that is necessary. Um, and I think many Iranians, inside and outside, feel that they've been betrayed, particularly Why? with this imp emphasis on the nuclear weapon issue. It has distracted the world from paying attention to the atrocities that is taking place today in Iran. All of us are at risk, and we particularly, a lot of us were American citizens as well, several in prison. We don't see much support uh, on this government showing um, direct action to help them out. And, and I think this is really a disappointment on the Iranian side. Let me press you, Mr. Limbert. Uh, Shireen raises the issue of uh, Americans who are currently in jail in Iran. What is the government doing? And do you have any indication that they're going to be, uh, they're going to be released? The, for instance, the three hikers. Well, I, I would like to see them released as soon as possible. We all would like them to be. This, is, this has been uh, a very unfortunate um, our hearts go out to these innocent people who clearly wandered across an unmarked border and have been in custody for much, uh, for much too long. We are pursuing all available avenues. Uh, I should note, that, for example, that our protecting power in Tehran, the, 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 uh, represented by the Swiss Embassy, has been able to visit these people. We are pressing for more visits. We are pressing for better treatment. And, of course, we are pressing for release as soon as possible. I want to play uh, a little clip of your film, Shireen, that won that prize at the Venice Film Festival. It's about student protests back in 19, early 1950s, which in fact today's student protests commemorate. Let's just play this. <laughs> سکوت عجیبی بود احساسی که همه چیز در زمان تکرار می شد امید خیانت و ترس Shireen, are you surprised at some of those very words? I mean, when you shot this, did you know that what was going to be going on in Iran today? Um, so I had been working it? on this film for six years, uh, and it was absolute coincidence um, that uh, as we were finalizing the edit, um, the current event happened in Iran, the election. And so it was uh, an, really an accident, but at the same time, 1953, for all of us who are interested in Iranian politics, uh, is a determining historical point. That's when the U.S. and the U.K. had the coup that brought back the Shah of Iran. Exactly. Uh, and I think that uh, particularly that last few days, as the anniversary of the student movement comes, um, we realize that Iranian people have been fighting for democracy and freedom for over 150 years. 
and, and, and also the women of Iran have been also fighting for ideal democracy and equality. So how odd that um, this struggle continues today with such similarity and force. And I, I, can I just make one second comment that the issue of the American passport does not only belong to the American-born, but the Iranian-born uh, who are also holding American citizenship, including Kiana Tajbash. So when I refer to help and protection, is only not for those people who are born in this country, but those who are, you know, uh, currently the citizen of